Hi there and welcome back to Jay's Permaculture Allotment. Now it's time for the July update tour. Now I'll try and keep this one a little shorter than the last one and highlight some of the newer things that I've put in since last time and show you some of the production. So we've had lots of courgettes and things. I've already harvested lots of beetroots. Um, what else? Shallots, garlic. So we've had quite a lot of production already from here. Lots of kale and lots of the purple French beans as well. So here we go. A lot of the plants have really been building up and some of the little flower seedlings that were in and now plants are a couple of foot tall. These are galadias, the bees love these. And then we've got the dahlias. Courgette, so this golden courgette, this has just been non stop production. Okay, go into it. You see all those tiny little ones at the top? Each one of those will become another courgette. We still got more down the bottom. So, this one I'm picking off courgettes every couple of days, they're just so abundant. Got tomatoes. The kale and the purple beans. Now the trick with the beans is to continuously be picking them. As soon as you leave them on there for too long it stops doing the bean production and um, works on seeds. So if you want it to continue to flower and put out more beans then keep ahead of the picking and then it'll keep cropping for you. The aubergine is doing really well. This is the Peruvian hairy chili. So it's in flower. This is the flower here. Purple one. Tomatoes. Kale. More courgettes. So this was the Chinese yam. And as you can see, it's now reached six foot. So some tansy, which is a fantastic pollinator, but also a fantastic compost accelerator. We've got the one and only sunflower. More tomatoes, more squash, ochre. And then the perennial onions, more tomatoes. So as you can see up here, this aubergine here actually has, I'll pull off the dead flower a bit, there's actually an aubergine in there growing. So anyone who thinks aubergines are too tropical to grow in the UK, think again. We have peppers. with lots of different varieties and then this one is yard long beans I started those late so not everything's ready at the same time great mullins going great the achocha now this has been so prolific I'm munching on these daily, each time I come down I'm grabbing them. As you can see. These are the churches here. Now at this size, they're nice just to munch on and they have a cucumber flavour. But if you wait until, let's find one. They are bigger. So you can see the size difference. You notice the colour starts changing, they grow a bit paler and then the seeds inside become hard which is great because you can then save the seeds but then you use these like a green pepper so at the smaller size you can use them in your salads just like a cucumber and that's the flavour they have and then once they get bigger use them like a green pepper so you can stuff them or chop them, put them in stir fries etc okay so this is a plant that I've added this is a tamarillo so this is a subtropical now 
it's going to be touch and go whether or not this one overwinters here because they prefer really well drained soil so although I've grown these from seed and um, they overwintered fine and some of the ones that I've still got in containers are already flowering and producing fruit but this is one of the smaller ones so I decided since I've got seven of these it's worth risking and put one in to see how they do that's a good thing when you're growing from a seed it costs you next to nothing apart from your time and um, there is actually a lemon plant in here believe it or not this one here is a lemon that I actually grew from seed as well but the church is deciding it's going to smother everything that's how prolific they are I have several other lemons as well that I've grown from seed and I do have a fairly big citrus collection in my polytunnel as well as you can see more peppers growing happily outside with lemon balm and we've got some dwarf sunflowers there apples are doing well they're getting the windfall so they're thinning themselves out then we've got the amber goji and you'll actually see we've got some and they're starting to turn amber now i need to spray a little bit of neem oil on here because there's a little bit of powdery mildew starting and neem oil is the best thing for that and that's all organic or natural it actually comes from a, a neem plant or neem tree another one of these favorites this is borage and again it's all edible and a lot of people use the flowers of this in with pims I don't drink so it's not something that I would personally do and you've got the Tortendine perennial kale then we've got the jujube trees again full of flowers they're only tiny but we're yet waiting to see if any of them were set fruit I think it might be a bit late in the season now so even if they do set fruit um, I don't think they'd actually ripen the hollyhocks these actually have edible uses as well a rhubarb this breed mm. nearly ran over you nearly had fun there okay so this is merlin's garden so we did have a clary sage in here but in the wind um, it actually snapped the main stem so I took that one out and just to fill up the space I put in a little fig tree which again has started putting on figs can you see that so always a good sign more dahlias again my dahlias I grow from seed I always find they end up stronger that way Okay, so look at these tomatoes. You can see size wise, this is a, a good size tomato. So we're just waiting for some of these to start ripening. But there's tons of them all the way through the plant. But because of the weight of them, and being a bush variety our huge clusters here they tend to go right the way down towards the floor so the bush achocha okay so we've got cucumbers here and yes we have cucumbers this is the red russian kale tomatoes and then we've got the yakon so this will end up five or six foot tall with little sunflowers on top so this is the one that has the tuberous root that's really sweet then we have a bush cherry now this was already in 
uh, I put this in previously, but I think I actually missed it off the last video. So this one is called Athos, and it's actually a bush cherry. So it's not going to grow into a big tree where you have to sort of stand on a ladder to try and grab the cherries. This one stays as a bush the whole way through. And even if I was to take cutting and root that, that would then become a bush rather than a tree. So it's not that it's been grafted onto anything, it's the way it's been bred. Again, you can see the weight of the tomatoes in here are just crazy. Beautiful calendulas. One of the beans. One of the galadias. More of the Peruvian hairy pepper, chili peppers. First tomato that's ripening. So it'd be nice to try that. Tiger nuts are doing really well. And we've got lovely Conroe Bartertrake, if I get out of the light so you can see them. Now I've got some on the other plots that I've let them go to complete flower and the flowers are stunning when they're open, the bees adore them. So they have uh, purple, like feathery bits at the top. I'll actually show you one because I've got some more on the other plot. This is one of the round courgettes. I get that one come over here. Now trying to keep up with these is a nightmare because they grow so big, so fast. As you can see, that's already bigger than my hand. And there's another one underneath. That's at least the same size, if not bigger. Another one there, another one there, more growing there. So it's really prolific. And it's actually shading out. I need to thin out some of the leaves, which you can do. So we can thin out these leaves and make it a little bit more accessible for light to reach the fig. We've got another cucumber here with more kale. Uh, canna edulis, so uh, edible canna. But again, it should still flower. My first time of growing that. So then we've got the pluot, which is the cross between the plum and an apricot. This is the summer savoury, so it's not lavender, although it looks similar to it when you see the flowers. That's lovely. But again, these love it. And if you can see all the bees on it. Great. Lovely smell. And then the edible lupins. They haven't done fantastically well. I don't know if the ground was actually too rich for them. Um, but produced a few pods, so at least we get to try them. Chamomile, if you want a nice relaxing cuppa. Lots of chamomile, and again, all the pollinators love those. This is oregano in flower. So as well as it being delicious, it's also really attractive. More aubergines, more calendula. Roselle hibiscus is this one here. It's actually got a couple of little flower buds forming on it. More peppers, beans, kale, more aubergines and flour. Again, perennial onions. This is the bubble berry. Oh look, you can see it's actually in flower. Now this one actually has, as you can see it gripping me, spikes on the leaves, so it's not like a strawberry and it doesn't send out runners the same. This one grows as a bush. And it looks like a comical strawberry. Now that's a, another new one that I put in as a blueberry. I've put another blueberry on uh, one of the other beds as well. So that's the nectarine. More beans, more squash. St. John's wort flowering well. 
and also in the middle of the St. John's Wort is another pepper. So remember Madonna, Madonna the Odeberry? That's this one here. We also have the bitter gourds doing well. So it's now up, it must be, it's a good three foot tall. So doing well, I'm happy with that. More yakon, more oregano, more peppers, Australian mountain pepper. So do you remember the Caucasian spinach that was looking a bit stunted? Well, it's all of a sudden decided it's going to go for gold and it's going to start climbing. Although I think I'm going to have to assist it on the climbing side of things. But this one you use just like a normal spinach, but this one's perennial. Whereas normal spinach just bolts and then that's it. This one, it keeps going and going and then it dies back each year and then grows from the roots. This one is lemon verbena. Some of the perennial onions flowering. Lemon balm. This one is the terrific. So it produces like a miniature type cherry. Um, but this one's actually a nitrogen fixer, so it's not actually related to the cherry I don't believe and it's, it's just tiny but they're they're quite um, delicious the fruits they're not sweet they're quite sort of sherbet like more calendula more dahlia okay if I stand back you can see then this is the Greek gigantus beans so and I've got two lots I've actually got three lots but two on this plot of this now these were from home save seeds and for some reason some must have actually cross-pollinated with something like scarlet runner bean because the true flowers on a Greek gigantes are snow white so it's going to be interesting to see what the bean turns out on these ones so Greek gigantes, as I mentioned previously, they're actually a soup bean rather than a fresh bean. So you actually wait until these dry, but they are huge. So they're more like a butter bean. So again, this is a plum. Another fig tree in here. So all of the fig trees will grow larger and take up a permanent space. Whereas a lot of the other plants that are in here are annuals. So things like the kale, the aubergines, the peppers, etc. Once they come out, then there'll be a lot more space. So as the bigger plants and bushes start shading the ground, then you obviously won't be able to grow the same type of thing underneath them because it'll have less light. So that's why we're making it more of a perennial system over here and it makes it a lot less work. So this was a, a dwarf peach. Again, all of these went in this year. Red currants. So a few flowers. Peppers. More kale. Another fig. So remember this was the Sandra fig and as I said, it's prolific, so even at this size, it's already producing figs. So, nice one, Sandra. <laughs> so, there seems to be more of the white on this Greek Gigantus. So, and I know we do have some beans set on here. There's a couple of little ones. I know there's some bigger ones. I did see it earlier, which are evading my gaze at the moment. I'll take my word for it, they are there. So the fourberry, so this was the amber berry, and then you have this was the black version. 
so they help cross-pollinate each other and you end up with a better yield so this was only tiny when it went in it was no more than about 10 inches tall it's now about three foot tall oh I just noticed I didn't even know there was any on here let's pick a couple of those wow almost the size of grapes bigger than the blueberry I've actually got big hands so let me give one of these a taste now the amber ones I've tried and they were quite sharp so be interesting to see how these ones taste actually these are not as sharp as the amber ones I was expecting these ones to be sharper, more like a black currant, but they're not. They're actually less tart. Very nice and juicy. More squash. So I think there we have it. So over the coming weeks, I will show you some of my other plots as well. I say I have two and a half plots. So this is a half plot. So this is my newest one. And. Um, the others you'll see a slightly different style but now that I'm seeing how productive this is this is how I'm going to actually be making some of my other plots um, because it's a lot more attractive a lot less pest problems and the way that I, it's all mulched and layered and it's no dig now it's less watering as well apart from when you initially put the the seedlings in obviously but it's only maybe two or three times watering and then the rest of the time nature takes care of where the leaf mold and the mushroom compost that I've actually had underneath and the wood chips obviously help retain the moisture so as I was mentioning the globe artichokes and when they're in flower as you can see, if the bees just adore them, they stand there watching for ages, watching these guys.